That's high as it goes. That's high as it goes. I don't want to go any higher for the people behind me. Screw them. That's why you didn't sit there. You don't care. You better be good, man. I'm going to fall asleep. That's not good job. There's more people from Todd Roberts. I hope he Remember, he makes his own guitars. They have more fret. He goes higher and higher notes. Especially he's got all kinds of like electronic music. Yeah. 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 Six, he's 69 years old. Okay. <laughs>
live on stage tonight, Uli Jan Rao. Good to be back here at long last, and um, well, it's been a long time. I think the last time we were here, we were caught, we were cut brutally short. Yeah, there were so many bands, and then I think three songs later or so, I had to stop. 
Uh, yeah, some people were very upset, including me. <laughs> no, that was not that was not cool. But today we got plenty more where that came from, so we're going to make up for it. Yeah. Mm. So, guys, uh, are you supposed to be that close? Because this is supposed to be seated. The, the problem is. You're only going to hear my guitar. This is, no, 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 I mean, you're not going to hear the music. Can they hear the music down here? Are you sure? Because, um, all right. It's not loud um, enough. Uh, where's my sound guy, Diddy? Diddy, make sure that they have it here in the front because the, the row is there. How is this physically possible? No, 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 you don't understand. <laughs> I'm only half the story. We also need some accompaniment, you know? It's not just shred, shred, shred. I mean, you know, it's like, it's like you know? I mean, please. Yeah, right. I, I don't trust you. Uh, we're just all guitar fanatics, you know? No, 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 we need to hear the orchestra, you know? Okay, particularly for the next song. So, um, just... Forgive me a little bit of German. Where is my song guy, Diddy? You need a light next time. I need this light so I know where you are. Like, yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Diddy, sag mal, mach mir das mal hier ein bisschen lauter. Die sind uh, unglaublich nah und die werden nur Gitarre hören und ich muss irgendwie runterdrehen, sonst ist das unerträglich. Um, mach mir das lauter hier, die, die Monitore, weißt du? Das hört sich sonst so komisch an. Okay, after this lesson in German, did anybody get that? Yeah, we got it. Not really, did you? Well, who got it? You can sp I missed you. Well, I know, I've got a bunch of Germans here. You know, we speak a lot of German on the bus. Yeah, but, uh, anyway, so today is different. Uh, where's my band? Uh, probably out shopping or whatever. <laughs> so they let me do all the, the work, you know. I'm the old guy and I have to carry the the load. Yeah, of course, exactly. <clears throat> so, because this is built as an evening with, I'm going to do a lot of talking and very little playing. Uh, I, I will be doing a lot of talking, more than normal. You know, sometimes I, I can't open my mouth and sometimes I can't shut up, you know. So, I've never figured out why that is, but uh, today maybe I'll find the happy medium with your help. So um, that first song was called Amadeus, and uh, it was written here in California in 85, in Corona de Mar by the poolside. Um, yeah, I, um, you know, that was the first Electric Sun tour. Caesar was there. Some of you were there, um, and uh, we were in Albuquerque, and we watched this blockbuster movie, Amadeus, and the next day, my head was full of these melodies, and I was by the pool, and then suddenly, it was in my mind all the time, and then I thought, hmm, that sounds like Mozart, but it isn't, so um, let's do something with it, you know, and that, that's the result of that song. Now, talking about Mo Mozart, um, since this is an evening with, I'm going to give you some of the stuff that really um, means a lot to me. And that's not all rock yeah. music, but uh, yeah. I really um, love classical music. And I, uh, I, at some point I thought, why not translate some of these things from the piano to the guitar or the violin? That's what I'm going to do now. Famous um, piece is called um, Rondo a la Toca. I'm sure you've heard it. Beautiful little theme. And um, I'm going to play that on the guitar. <laughs> Thank you. 
flute and um, so the queen of the night is quite a handful actually and she gets really um, quite angry um, and some which you can hear in the music it's not really nowadays kind of angry but in those days uh, <laughs> some of these notes would be really angry uh, and some of them are very very pretty most of it is pretty okay queen of the night <laughs> Thank you. This next piece I wrote uh, some time ago back in England and it's an instrumental um, and I'm going to dedicate that to Jeff Beck because the intro has a Jeff Beck touch absolutely blow by blow. One of the great guitar albums which I was influenced by back in the day. Hell yeah! Um, when I did this, I didn't even think about it. But then, uh, when Jeff died, uh, I thought, hmm, that is actually a little bit like that, you know? Only for a few seconds. But it's enough to, uh, yeah, to remember him. Um, it's a song about liberty, and it's called The Cry.
It's supposed to be nine strings, so slightly reduced today. So this piece um, is uh, called Passage to India. I wrote it for this solo tour which was supposed to take place in uh, 2020. We had 70 shows booked in the States, and then of course that doesn't, it didn't happen because we started in Europe and after 13 shows it was nothing doing. We um, were going into lockdown, all of us. And yeah, it wasn't so bad for me, but for most other people it was bad, you know. So I, I lucked out because I um, actually managed to write a book in the time, which otherwise would have been impossible. But uh, yeah, I, I had a whole bunch of songs written for um, this solo tour, and uh, a couple of these I'm going to do today. So this one, Passage to Enya, is really just a, a beginning and end, but the rest is all completely improvised. It is a journey, um, and I never really know where it takes me. So, <laughs> you know, um, it depends on the inspiration of the day, and uh, with your help, We'll go on this little journey together. So let's see what's happening.
this is when you need to eat the work. I don't care if it's jumbo, give me a drum. Yeah. <laughs> Any drum will work.
This is the result of what I did during COVID. It's um, quite a tome with 600 pages and lots of um, lots of pictures. You know, As you maybe yeah, you can see some of them on the screen. It's basically a book about the things that I care about, which uh, it's not supposed to be a commercial book. Completely, completely untainted by commercialism because I made sure we didn't go through a publisher because I knew they would want to commercialize it and you know have uh, anything in there from sex, drugs, rock and roll, whatever. I'm not interest, interested in all any of that. This book is not like that. It's um, got some, yeah, some philosophical things. It's about basically my my worldview, which uh, emerged. Uh, through all these years, you know, I've always been a bit of a searcher, uh, trying to look for answers, I still do, and uh, some of the ones that I think um, that were, that I found are in there, and it's supposed to be an inspiration, just inspirational, you know, just sharing some ideas with you, uh, rather it's not a book that has like a pontificating message or so. But um, yeah, it, it does tie in with what I do musically very much because um, as you may have noticed, my music is not, you can't really put it into a box very well. I mean, the other day, one reporter, when I did the interviews on the phone, he said, um, and he didn't, sometimes you get these guys, you know, they, they get their, their, their script, you know, or the publicist sends it out, you know, and um, then, you know, they, they don't really know who you are, you know, so they ask a few standard questions, which is fine, you know, but, uh, so that guy was not so well prepared, but uh, then <laughs> he asked the following question, he said, so um, if there was, um, what's your most defining album, you know, of yourself, you know, and and I thought, I don't have one, you know, <laughs> because they're, they're all completely different. Yeah, Metamorphosis is definitely not defining, because that's way out there. I'm gonna play some of that later on. No, I mean, actually, uh, you know, is it the early Scorpions, or is it the Electric Sun, or is it the Transcendental Sky Guitar, or is it what I just did, or is it whatever, you know? I, the fact is, I've tried all my life very hard not to be, be put in the box. <laughs> That's why I left the Scorpions, you know? That, that's really it. Um, so, and the result is that I'm coming up with a lot of diverse stuff and uh, not everybody can handle it because most people when they go to an um, uh, Italian restaurant, they want pizza or lasagna or pasta. You know, with me they get world view or whatever, you know, or something from other planets even, you know? So not everybody can stomach that, you know? Um, but. You are here because I, I do those things, and um, this uh, first half of the set is, is a really good example. Um, particularly the, play, the piece I'm going to play now, which is really way out there. This is a piece with a message, and I wrote that for that uh, 2020 tour, which um, yeah didn't happen. Uh, it's a song about um, a subject which I think is very important, but which a lot of people, it gets uh, on a lot of people's nerves actually. It's about climate change 
and back in early 20, 2020, it was really red hot. Um, now people start forgetting it, except for when they get landslides or when the house is burned down and suddenly then, oh yeah, maybe we're doing something wrong, you know. And then there are those who say, yeah, it's not man-made, it's all cyclical, etc. I happen to believe it's us who are actually totally responsible for these things, you know. And as an artist, I'm just putting in my two cents worth, you know. I mean, I don't have uh, answers to these uh, incredible questions, and neither do the politicians. Um, <laughs> you know, but the, the most important thing is that we need to be aware of all that. And, uh, and really everybody, you know, just um, take it seriously. You know, we're all just one person each. But I do think that, and I'm very, very... Um, convinced that each person's uh, thoughts and feelings actually do count because I do think that we're all um, somehow connected mentally, spiritually, and um, uh, you know there there is a general stream of consciousness around the, the globe that we're all part of. We can't see it, we can't touch it, but all the things that are really important. Uh, we can't see or touch um, other than money. And even that we can't touch because it's usually the bank account. <laughs> it's, it's just a figure, you know. So anyways, uh, so this next piece is called Child of Thunder and it is um, the closest I'll probably ever get to writing a musical because uh, when I wrote it, <clears throat> I wrote it just for the guitar and the voice and the... Um, So uh, I wrote it for, no, no, it's that one. <laughs> we, we haven't figured that out yet. Just the first one, the one with the, yeah? And I hopefully he, he tuned it down, otherwise I'd be in trouble. No, not that one, that one, the first one. Oh, what? I'm what? No, we only have one. They're, they're being printed right now. You know, I'm not going to sign my own copy, no. No, what they do is, uh, my manager came up with this glorious idea because we were supposed to have the books now because uh, the, the books are part of this entire scenario. And so he said, well, let them buy vouchers, you know. So uh, at the merch, you can buy a voucher and then they'll, they'll send you the book, you know. It's not cheap, but to print them costs an arm and a leg because I was never said, we, had, we made at least uh, three or four different um, attempts at getting it right. And in the beginning, it was very difficult because the, um, you know, the size is very unusual and then uh, the binding is difficult with so many pages. The first one fell apart right away. This one actually is so sturdy, you know, you need, I mean, this, I would say it's pretty indestructible. Is it German but, made? Uh, yeah. Well, don't try it with your uh, matchbox or whatever, you know. But thank you. Now we're talking. So. Is that the dragon or the phoenix? <laughs> Dragon and Phoenix was basically the Transcendental Sky Guitar synonyms for that. This is a, a Dragon Sky Guitar because the Sky Guitars have different series, you know, and I've got quite a few of them today here. This one is actually called Excalibur. They all have individual names, you know, because this is like, um, this is like a battle sword. You can do anything with this guitar. It is incredibly um, versatile. You know, and uh, yeah, anyways, let me just check, check the tuning. Oh boy. Yeah, the bass string is completely wrong. Nice. What? This? No, that was uh, San Juan Capistrano many years ago at the uh, at 
the um, yeah, that was on our first American tour. I, I remember that. And uh, the first time we were there at the coach house with um, Michael Schenker. You were there, of course. Caesar was everywhere. It's what? Yeah, I I remember that. That, that was cool. Yeah, just with the keyboard player. That that was actually pretty much what I'm doing now. Except we didn't have this this the screen. No, we did already have the screen on there. Absolutely. And um, well, yeah, it was kind of like a forerunner, you know. I like this format. It's, uh, you can do things that you can't do with a band, basically, you know. So now we can do something. Yeah. yeah, you see, we were um, because this this tour is quite difficult to set up, and we would have need uh, needed an hour or more early on, and we didn't quite have it. So I'm doing that on stage. Nice and professional. Nobody would do that. Okay, this is called the Child of Thunder Mountain.
web of lies We use an empty silver A master of disguise And just like the Pied Piper He's leading the unwise In darkness Democracy dies And decentralized crucified On Pennsylvania Avenue And all this derided On stereotype Avenue
You're a prophet. Whoever, whoever said it. Some of you probably know that uh, uh, many years ago I got to record Vivaldi's Four Seasons with, with an orchestra, um, more than once, and different orchestras. And it was uh, quite an undertaking because at, at first when I started uh, I hadn't realized how difficult it was. <laughs> and then I, uh, yeah. Once I said, okay, let's do that, you know, I uh, really had to practice. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we have to do that. Do you have a guitar pick anywhere? I should do the Ingve thing, shouldn't I? And then kick them. Yeah, so we're going to do um, a few, well, select pieces from this metamorphosis and uh, because, um, as some of you know, the, uh, the Vivalis Four Seasons is one of the most famous pieces of music ever. It's been recorded by so many orchestras and you have all this beautiful and perfect rendition. So um, I thought, you know, uh, well, why not destroy it with the guitar? <laughs> I'm saying destroy because uh, there's, a, there's a story to that. When I first played with the orchestra in 1993, uh, Brussels Symphony Orchestra, and the conductor, uh, he was a really nice guy and very knowledgeable, you know, and I had, um, I didn't have the setup yet down, you know, we, I, I didn't really know how to play, uh, get the big sound very quietly, and, and it was difficult, you know. We did, we kind of muddled through, and it was a really uh, cool concert in the end, but it was, uh, it was tricky. So at some point I said to the um, conductor, you know, yeah, but I don't want to destroy the orchestra. And he said, you have to destroy the orchestra. <laughs> You know, and <laughs> well, I kind of me knew what he meant, you know, because here I am uh, basically interpreting this uh, amazing piece of music, timeless piece of music, with an instrument that wasn't written for, playing it actually like a rock guitar player, um, and playing the notes a classical guy would play, but I'm phrasing it quite differently and taking liberties with, uh, with some of these rhythms. Although I do know how to do it correctly, I, uh, it, it, just, it just came that way, you know, and I thought it was an exciting angle and, and the, the piece can, can handle it. It's almost indestructible as long as you play the right notes at the right time. And, <laughs> and uh, I also took the liberty of writing a, a, a percussion score. So there's timpani, bells, tubula bells, all this, which in the original there isn't. And uh, that gives it a completely different flow and feel. And, and it um, really also helps with the electric guitar. And um, then uh, at the end of the piece, after the winter, the, we're talking about four seasons, he did three concerts, or he did three pieces um, for each. Can you just stop talking? Yeah. Because I can't concentrate. So I don't want to be rude, but... Uh, multitasking skills are not as good as they used to be. Um, anyways, so uh, I see, now I lost my thread. Uh, 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 no, I haven't. Um, yes, I know it's the four seasons. Thank you. Maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll play all night long when we start now, yeah? Or, um, or Tokyo tapes. Uh, now I'm really losing my thread. It's uh, the percussion score, uh, I think, works really well. And um, at the end of the four seasons, I then, I don't know why, but uh, I started actually um, writing a guitar cadenza, and that developed into a whole new concerto, which I called Metamorphosis, which is based on the four seasons. Okay, we don't have time for all that, but we're going to play some excerpts. So the first one is the spring. Um, and 
and uh, you, everybody will have heard that melody, uh, at least as a ringtone on the telephone. <laughs> because my telephone at home has that ringtone. Not that I chose it, it just came that way. You know? <laughs> and because it's super catchy. Uh, the very intro, um, I'm just uh, jamming over it in a passage to India kind of way, you know. And uh, I hope Vivaldi doesn't listen from on high. Um, so this is it, yeah, the Four Seasons.
here. That was the spring. Now for the winter.
you. Now the very last of years, it's called Triumph of Spring. Thank you so much. So, well, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> so basically, we now have a break, much deserved, and then afterwards we're coming back with the vengeance and the full band. And then it will be totally different. Okay, thank you. See you later. <laughs> 